see just by looking around us here, it's quite a thick drainage line we're going in. We've just driven past Gowrie Dam at the northern side. And, uh, just a bit branch and antenna. I think it's going to be a good day around Gowrie Waterhole today. There's a zebra and impala, water buck, so a in the distance that might be hanging around. So it seems there's going to be some good wildlife around the dam. Hello there, his mongoose just ran past, but he very quick duck for the bush. Beautiful when they're running in college, it's such a fluid motion. Forward. 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 Oh, I got a bush. There we go. Beautiful colors on them. This is a water monitor, also known as a null monitor lizard. And two species out here, the rock monitor, which is a bit more stocky, and then the water monitor, this guy. Beautiful colors on them. This is still a youngster. Difficult to see exactly the size of him in terms of comparing it to something, but that's about two and a half feet long, two feet long, about 60, 70 centimeters head to tail. If you look at the shape of that tail, see it's got a almost like a rudder shape going up to a sharp sort of ridge at the top very very good swimmers the water monitor as the name suggests they do like to be close to water they might not be in water the whole time but they like being close to water and that's also one of the first refuges if I was to go down there and try and catch him he'll go right into the water run in there but at the moment he'll be pretty cold just lying in the sun trying to warm up for the day so we're not going to disturb him too much Very strong lizards. Your water monitor or null monitor, like this guy, they can get in perfect conditions, perfect habitat. They can get up to about two meters long. I mean, that is it's almost like the size of a, a reasonable crocodile, up to about seven feet in length. They can weigh quite a few kilograms. Beautiful lizards when they, well, even when they're small. You see little babies of these guys when they're the size of a normal skink. Also, beautiful colors on them. They eat mainly insects, small mammals, they'll scavenge pretty much whatever sort of carnivorous type of food they can, they can get down hold of. Very strong bite, they've got sort of ridge-like teeth. They can grab onto things with, with a lot of power. Awesome camouflage if you think of it, it's just lying right in the open, it literally is sort of just bare mud and small sticks around it. Very, very good camouflage. Luckily it's got that bit of sort of yellowy green on the underbelly and by the legs. If it wasn't for that we probably wouldn't even have seen it. move on just a little bit actually we don't even have to move on it we can just look ahead of us and then you'll see why we want to move on just up ahead that side the zebras you were looking at earlier from the water just walking into our view as well basically all I want to do is just go to that little shady spot you can see in the foreground there go sit there and that should give us a beautiful sort of half moon view of quite a few different animals around Gauri water at the moment Stay with us, we're going to go sit just there. Turn a bit more sideways. There you go. Stunning group of Impala.
love these big groups of them. You can see them. This group is, I think, the herd we've been seeing around the last few days. Probably about 80 or so of them. Had a rough count the other day. So you can't see them in herds of up to a few hundred, and they're just stunning having that many animals together. And when they run as well or when they move, with a bit of luck, this group will decide to move on a bit. Really, is beautiful. You get this like looks like a flowing river of antelope. Oh, look at that, in the background there. Let's go back a little bit. There's a pair of wildebeest horns sticking out. I didn't even see them there. There's the bull that hangs around him. We haven't actually given him a name yet. We call him George. We used to always call whichever wildebeest bull was dominant around the lodge. George. He's also quite happy and content. He's got a good area, good grazing, good water. And even though we're not in the middle of a big plains area where there's lots and lots of wildebeest, the occasional herd of females will move through and if they come past this area, they'll stick around. Like I said, he's got good grazing, good water, so that'll keep the females here for long enough, hopefully breeding season, for him to get a chance to mate with some of them. As for now, he's quite happy. There's lots of other animals around. There's lots of impala, zebra, waterbuck, He's got company, he doesn't have to be on lookout and sentry duty by himself. He's got lots of other eyes and ears to help him. So it means he can just take it nice and easy as well. Kick back a bit, enjoy the sun. Do some chewing on his cud. a few species going on here. We've got the wildebeest and impala we're looking at now. And then, uh, let's go a little bit forward. Just a slight movement and we'll be able to see some beautiful zebra as well. 